Greetings and welcome to the podcast show, Touching People for Heaven. Today is a special edition of My Sunday Prayer Letters with your host, Preacher John. God bless you, my dear friend. I pray in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ that there will be something here in this show, in this episode, that you are able to use in your life, in the life of your family, in the lives of your friends, and in the lives of people you haven't met yet. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. Okay, are you ready? Let's get started. Before I get started, there's a, I'm uh, recording this, and my video is going all kinds of haywire, but it's right here. Hello, YouTube. <laughs> and as usual, I've got so many things going on. I've got the mic in my face. I've got the sword searcher on my uh, Windows machine. I've got the garage band on my Apple machine, and I've got my iPhone recording the uh, YouTube video. I also have a tea today. It's uh, Celestial Seasonings. Let me see. Look it up here. It's uh, Mandarin Orange Spice. Mandarin Orange Spice. Boy, is it good. And I got it hot, too. Mm. Ah, sorry I had to do that. But, you know, I I just have to have that tea for some reason. It's become a staple in this podcast show. But I don't know. It's just what it is. I was going to record it without the tea, and I, just as I was beginning to record and do the show, I thought, what's missing? My tea. So I stopped everything, went and got, got me some hot water and made it some tea, and boy, it just hit the spot. So anyways, this is episode number 40, 40. Can you believe it? I've done 40 shows. After this, I'll, I would have done 40 shows when I thought I was not going to do even one or two. But, uh, you know, little things grow to big things. So episode number 40 is titled, Speak Good Things. Whoa. That's Matthew 12, 34 in the King James Version, and I'll read it to you. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Wow. And as I mentioned, this is a special edition show, and it's going to have my Sunday prayer letter, which I've been doing for many weeks now, and that just seems to be what the Holy Spirit is having me do, and uh, it's working out. Uh, it just seems to be moving smoothly for me, and uh, I'm pretty busy street preaching on the streets. That's a good 20 hours of just solid preaching, along with the prayers before preaching, prayers after preaching, and the Bible study, and all that I'm doing. And then even uh, even today, Saturday, uh, after spending several hours in prayer and the Word, you know, it, it takes me two or three hours just to uh, do the letter and to uh, another hour or so to do the uh, podcast and the and then I post it, post it all on the blog and send it out to different people. It's it's a lot of work, but, uh, you know, that's okay. So um, I lost my train of thought. <laughs> so, oh, special edition. That's what it was. Sorry. <laughs> so that's what this is. This is my Sunday prayer letter that I send out every Sunday morning to those on my prayer list. And if you're not on my prayer list, please jump on. Uh, you can go to uh, preacherjohn.ck, like Charlie and kangaroo, I guess, I don't know, C-K dot page, P-A-G-E. So it's preacherjohn dot C-K dot page, preacherjohn dot C-K dot page. And that takes you right to a landing page, and you can put in your name and email and a, a prayer request, and then you get on these uh, weekly letters, and I pray over you every day, and you have a chance to reply to the letter, and uh, I read all my emails, and I respond to the emails, and it's a great way to, for both of us to be encouraged, both of us to be connected, and for both of us to do the work of the Lord. And each of us have a certain job to do, and we do that job, and God is well pleased. Amen. <laughs> so let me get into my letter. It says, Greetings, my dear friend. What a week this has been. It's another one of those weeks that nearly took me out of commission. Yeah, I know. That sounds serious. And I think it is serious. How many times has the enemy tried to take you out? In fact, this week I had to cancel two preaching events and spend the days in my pajamas in bed. Not fun and not good for a street preacher and a minister. But things happen and things change. I think 
what I want to say right here, though, is do all that you can to not let the enemy destroy you and take you out. Because if you stand and have done all to stand, then stand, therefore, before Almighty God, asking Him for His mercy and grace to go on. In Jesus' name, amen. Wow. You know, I'm sort of kind of laughing to myself as I type today's letter, and I, I do it my show, actually, because it's getting to me. Be pretty interesting. <laughs> because what I want to write seems to never or nearly every time be altered by the Holy Spirit. I think it's because the Spirit knows what's going on in your life. I don't know. I'm not God. I do pray daily for you by mentioning your name to God in prayer, and at times I pray in the Spirit when moved by the Spirit. It's, you know, it's a great and wonderful time in the Spirit. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Holy Spirit. So what does this have to do with you, my friend? I think it's the second part of our verse for this Sunday's prayer letter. For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. Let me reread. Let me go back here, back in my notes, and let me reread this uh, verse for the day. Matthew twelve thirty four. O generation of vipers, how can ye, being evil, speak good things? For out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. So that's that was our verse. I didn't have that in my letter here. So let me scroll back down into here. So out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaketh. By speaking good things, good things will come out. No, not instantly, although sometimes there is an instant miracle that happens. It did like yesterday on Friday uh, in Longmont. I mean, I spoke and a miracle happened right in front of me. I mean, it was the most amazing. I mean, that just was something that just took me off guard because it was God moving not John Shuck moving it was God doing something in another person's life while I was preaching on the streets with my banner somebody walks up and I asked him do you need prayer and you know boom and it just began it was it was a miracle that happened right in front of me and I didn't do anything I just said a few words and God showed up and did a miracle in that person's life it's just absolutely miracle I mean it's an absolute Amazing thing to watch, actually. But just think, if I wasn't preaching, that miracle wouldn't have taken place. That miracle wouldn't have taken place. Hmm, that's a, something to think about, you know. However, this is God moving by His choice, not ours. God does the miracle and is moved by our faith. You know, I prayed for him, that person, by faith. It's my faith that was praying for him. Now, his faith, I don't know what was going on, but God moved. <laughs> it was pretty obvious. God was moving. It was, it was amazing. I mean, it's just amazing. I just, I just love it when God shows up on the scene and does something outside of our, our, of what we're, what we're doing. You know, <laughs> it's pretty amazing. I just love it. I, I love, I love it. I love working for God. It is the most amazing thing. God is the greatest employer there is. I, I just beg everyone to go to work for God because he's got great benefits. <laughs> great benefits and a great insurance package. And a great retirement plan. Oh, my goodness. Does, is that retirement plan good? <laughs> Let me, I digress. Let me go back to my letter here. Okay. Uh, however, that is God moving by his choice, not ours. God does the miracle and is moved by our faith. As the scripture says, Hebrews eleven six. but without faith, it is impossible to please him. For he that cometh to God must believe that he is, and that he is a rewarder of them that diligently seek him. Isn't that a cool scripture? I love it, man. I love it. You know, going back to our verse in Matthew 12, 34. Oh, notice the verse address. It's the first book in the New Testament and the first sequence of digits. One, two, three, four. Things like this. Take notice. Because, you know, you as I'm saying this show, you may not get it. But if you go to the Bible and you look at, well, this is the first book of a New Testament, New Contract, 
And it's the first line of digits, one, two, three, four. Hmm, interesting. You know, things like this take notice. Because since God is the author of the Holy Bible, he writes his word in such a way as to hide mysteries in his word. This is why we all, Christians that is, need a fresh filling of the Holy Ghost. And dare I say, every morning, amen, every morning, kind of like what uh, Lamentations 3, verses 22 and 23 say, it is of the Lord's mercy that we are not consumed, because his compassions fail not. They are new every morning, and great is thy faithfulness. You know, that's a song. Great is thy faithful. You know that song there? Yeah, that's that's a good thing to sing today. I mean, this you know, this is Sunday, and that would be a good song. Great is thy faithfulness. And just sing it out loud to yourself. When you're walking down the street, or when you're in your home, and when you're in your car, just sing those one, two, three, four words. Great is thy faithfulness. Because out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth speaks. So fill your heart with words like, great is thy faithfulness. Great is thy faithfulness. Wow. You know, in this verse also, it speaks of good things. You know, why is it so important? You know, why is it so important to warrant a full letter to the subject of speaking? Could it be here in this verse, Matthew 12, 37? For by the words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words shalt thou be condemned. Man, you know, that is, as I'm just, you know, I've read this, proofread my letter several times, and as I just read this, Matthew 12, 37, I felt something in my spirit, and I need to read it again. Because I think some of you guys missed it. It says this, For by thy words thou shalt be justified. In the King James, when you say thy, T-H-Y, or, or T-H-O-U, those are words that signify he's speaking to one single person. He's not speaking to the guy next door, or the guy next to you, or the guy behind the back seat of your car. No, he's speaking to your heart these words. That's what's great about, one of the great things about the King James is it, it's, it tells you who the words are directed to. And this verse is directed to you, my friend. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Whew, man, I tell you, that is something to think about. That's Matthew 12, 37. Matthew 12, 37. So first book, Matthew is the first book. 12 is a dozen. 37 adds up to 7, 8, 9, 10, 10. So, you know, so 12, 37 is a good verse. You know, included in this topic could also be this verse, Matthew 12, 35. A good man, and that man in King James is man, mankind, male and female. Okay, there's a male and a female of the mankind on earth. It's really important. The words we use, I tell you, Satan is allowing people. There's another sidebar. Sorry, guys. Satan is perverting our language so that when we speak this perverted language, this corrupted language, we sow corrupted seeds. It's kind of like what I said in the last uh, letter show last week, I think. I'm not sure, but I think. So, I mean, we need to find out what are the correct words to speak. Like if you're in a court situation and you're on trial, you know, every word is important. Every word, every single solitary word has a meaning and needs to be placed with the next word in line to say the correct meaning. That's what happens is meanings change and words get changed and we never know what we're speaking. Oh, that's a whole other topic. But let me just go back to Matthew 12, 35. A good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. An evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. You know, 
it's interesting, isn't it? it just, but think about it, 1235, Matthew 1235, go in there and read that. That's a, that's a verse that can really set you free, my friend. Let me get another cup of just slip of tea here. This is, mm, boy, that tea is just really good. <laughs> Sorry. But can you see how by studying the Word of God, we can build a life in which everything we do will be of the Lord and will be rewarded for the work that we've done on earth? Please, hear me out. When I talk this way, the first response seems to come from people who are not assured in their salvation. Because they will say to me, there is no salvation by works, it's by faith. <laughs> yes, I know that. And that is what I'm not talking about, okay? I'm not talking about salvation by works. Okay, that doesn't exist. That's, that's, that's other religions that are not Christian, even though they may say they're Christian. Now, that's another topic there, too. <laughs> Sorry. Okay, now, however, if for some reason there is someone reading this letter and is not saved or not sure of their salvation— well, let's pray. Ready? Jesus, if you're real, here I am. That's Acts 2.21. You know, by believing on the Lord Jesus Christ, you will be saved. Read the Word of God. Find out for yourself. Study to show yourself. Approved unto God. You know, that's 1 Timothy 2.15. Because... This verse here can save you from eternal damnation, which is hell and the lake of fire. It's Acts 16.31. Acts 16.31. Acts 16.31. And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved, and thy house. I'll repeat it. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ, and thou shalt be saved in thy house. Amen. You know, this is a fact and can be believed and is able to be spoken, like our letter today, which is titled, Speak Good Things. <laughs> I mean, speak good things. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. That's a word spoken, and that's a good thing, <laughs> which will bring forth good things in your life. Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ. Therefore, speak salvation into your life. Romans 10, 13 is what's on my banner, one of the many verses on my banner. Romans 10, 13, For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Period. I mean, that's it. Call upon the name of the Lord and you shall be saved. God knows if, you can, if you're believing or not. You don't have to go to church. You don't, like I talked to another couple. They were drug addicts. But, you know, they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ, but they were scared. They thought they had to give up their drugs. They had to lay all their stuff down and, and become clean first. And then ask Jesus to save them. I said, no, 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 no. It says, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and you shall be saved. And then God will come in there and clean your life up. He will help you as you turn to him, as the scripture says, repent of your sins. As you turn to him, it's, it's just so beautiful to see somebody who was in sin, who could not get out of the sin, on their own works, and they believed on the Lord Jesus Christ. The Lord Jesus Christ saved them, and for some reason, by a miracle of Jesus Christ, because we're born into the family of God, all those sins began to disappear, and Jesus began to put a clean heart into us. Wow. That's pretty cool, isn't it? <laughs> you know, may I also say to you, welcome to the family of God. A key verse of Scripture, if you just join the family of God, and if you're already in the family of God, this is a key verse of Scripture to jump into and begin studying the Bible, which is John 3.16. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, that whosoever believeth in him should not perish, but have everlasting life period. End of statement. You know, from this verse, you can venture to the verses above it, and then you can venture to the verses below it, 
And you can continue reading the entire book of the Gospel according to St. John. Because in this book, the book of John, you can get the true nature of the love of God and the love of Christ and come to understand why we all must be saved to enter into the kingdom of God. Okay, let's go on and finish up this letter as usual. I'm full of words. Hey, that's what I wanted to talk about. <laughs> full of words. It's the verse for this Sunday prayer letter. It's Matthew 12, 34. Be filled with the Holy Ghost and speak good things. Amen. You know, as our heart, our spirit, is filled with the Spirit of God, we then can speak out of the abundance of our heart. This can be heard. It's our mouth that speaks, and our ears can hear these words, and our brain can be filled with good words. Amen. However, the mystery is speaking words of spirit. Yes. <laughs> Here we go. This is another language. This new language is called spirit language, or in more Bible terms, speaking with tongues of angels. That is our heavenly language. We will not be speaking English or Spanish or French or even Pignan in heaven. It just it's not going to happen. <laughs> okay, you know, angels don't speak Russian to each other. Angels don't speak German to each other. And angels don't speak Mandarin Chinese to each other either. I mean, you know, they do that when they're ministering to the Mandarin Chinese. Yes, they will not speak heavenly language to the Mandarin Chinese if they're ministering to, I mean, that's just, you know, uh, come on, guys. You know, I mean, it's pretty simple if we don't get it all complicated, okay? You know, so anyways, my friend, speaking good things is very important. Remember, we are justified or condemned by our words. Remember, I read that in Matthew twelve thirty seven. In fact, I said it several times. Remember, we are justified or condemned by our words. Wow. You know, here are a couple more verses that can be spoken out loud so we can hear them, and God can hear them too. It's in Psalm 5, 3, chapter 5, verse 3 in Psalms. My voice shalt thou hear in the morning, O Lord. In the morning will I direct my prayer unto thee and will look up. Wow. Amen. In Psalm 51.10, Create in me a clean heart, O God, and renew a right spirit within me. Amen. <laughs> Amen. <sighs> Amen. I almost want to read those verses again, but i got to go on. You know, I, I just love this. I, I love the Word of God. I hope you do too. You know, and I'll go on with my letter. So I, I say here, I pray for you every day, my friend. I pray that God touches you for heaven. I pray that you be filled with God's Holy Spirit. I pray that your heart be filled with God's mercies. I pray that out of the abundance of your heart, your mouth will speak good things. Amen. And my letter is signed in loving kindness and mercy, J.C. At the bottom of my letter is three verses. Psalm 23, 6, Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life, and I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. <laughs> Psalm 89, 1, I will sing of the mercies of the Lord forever. With thy mouth will I make known thy faithfulness to all generations. And in Psalm 119, 77, let thy tender mercies come unto me, that I may live, for thy love is my delight. Amen. So, folks, this is my Sunday prayer letter. is written Saturday, January 25th, 2020, at 5.01 p.m., Boulder, Colorado. This is John Shuck, street preacher, church builder, pastor, and missionary. JohnShuck.org is where you can be found. I can be found. It's J O H N. C-H-O-Q-U-E dot org. John Shuck dot org. All right, my friends, God bless you. I hope this was wonderful for you, and we'll talk to you again.